how would you like to replace 13 advanced Sudoku strategies needed to solve this puzzle with just one simple trick? And with that, it's solving time. First, get some quick solves out here in the middle of the puzzle. You might notice with these fives, there's only one place to put a five in block five. And with these fours, you'll notice there's only one place to put a four here in block five as well. With these two eights, you can put an eight right there. And then with these two nines, you can solve for a nine right there. Greetings, friend. If you run this puzzle by Aaron through a solver, it will list 13 advanced strategies you need to solve it. But I'll show you how to do it by applying one simple hack with a few little tweaks over and over again so you can solve it much faster and much more fun. So next, what you want to do is find restrictions in this puzzle by looking at the digits 1 to 9. There's only one 1 right here. And if you have one possibility for a digit in a 3x3 three three block, solve it. If you got two possibilities, mark it. It's the quickest way to find those restrictions. The ones, you cannot do anything right now. With the twos, you might notice you have two and a three remaining here in block five. So you do want to mark that using center marking because it's a nice uh, naked pair placeholder. Nothing else with the twos. If you go to threes, you will be able to mark two places for three here in block eight and also be able to mark here in block four. That's it for the threes. If you move on to the fours, you'll see two possibilities for a four in block three and then in block four with these fours, two possibilities right there. Okay, how about the fives? Two places for a five in block two and with these fives, two places here in block seven. The sixes, two possibilities for a six in block three. And then in block eight, two possibilities right there. So far, no more solves. The sevens, you'll notice, can go in these two spots in block two. And then in block nine, these two spots because of these sevens. The eights, and you notice this is a pretty hard puzzle. Not getting any solves here, just getting some marks down. You can mark eights in block three and also here in block eight and then you might see with this eight and these two eights the eights are restricted to the same two cells as the fives whenever you see the marks together like that you found a hidden pair so switch to center marking and you know that no other digits can be in these two cells because one of them has to contain a five and one has to contain an eight if you're not that familiar with terms like hidden pairs uh, you can download my free sudoku solving guide from the pinned comment but move on to the nines now, and you'll see two places for a nine in block one, and then with these nines, two places here in block six. But that's it. There are no more easy solves. We actually did not add any more solves by doing all the marking. This is a really hard puzzle. Now the question of the day, what did you do at this point in the puzzle? Did you find a strategy or a way through it? I'd love to hear from you. Please, please share with me in the comments. Help me grow the Internet's best Sudoku community. I want to hear from you. Because now it's time to show the simple trick. So Aaron, you know, made this handmade classic, and he's very good at it. I've featured many times. Setters want to telegraph areas where they want you to look. They found an idea and they want to share it with you. So you want to look for what's called setter's intent. You probably notice he gave you some easy solves right here in block five and left you with this two, three, and you can pair. The other thing Aaron did, and he likes to do, is you notice how you have all of these cells given in block one. And so you can slice through with the remaining digits to exactly one column and one row. This forms what's called an ERI, an empty rectangle intersection. And what it does is it kind of, it's kind of like this chute where restrictions go in through the column and out through the row. I'll show you how it works. You want to take advantage of these and you want to get curious. If you 
were to notice some restrictions here that would affect this empty rectangle shoot and these cells, you probably notice uh, you want to fill out block, well, row six here. You got a four, five, seven, eight, nine, you know, one, two, three, and a six. And you're probably like, Tim Lake, why would I fill this out? Because you want to be curious. This should include you in, in this block. This should include you in. Be curious. This can't be a three. This could be a one, two, three, or six. But you notice now you have another by value cell to go with this two, three. By value cells, you know, you solve one of these, uh, you remove one of the digits, you can solve the cell pretty quickly. I'll go here and call them six. You got a four, five, six, eight, nine. You need a one, two, three, or seven. And probably notice that can't be a three. This could be a one, two, three, seven. This cannot be a three or seven. And now you end up with another by value cell. So these three cells are very interesting and they're on the thumbnail. You notice there are three paired possibilities of the digits one, two, and three. And so if this is a two, that's a one. If this is a three, that's a one. And so you can move a one right there using what's called an X, Y wing. However, that is not gonna get you very far. That's not the intended strategy. There's something even cooler going on here. You have to ask yourself this other question. Are these three digits, this, can two of them be the same? So can these two be ones? Or do they have to be all three different digits? If you know the answer to that, it's going to make the solving hack so much more powerful. And so if you analyze this cell here, there's only two possibilities. If this is a three. That's two. That's a one. All three of these digits would be different. Right? You can agree with that. The only other possibility, since there's only one or three here, they form what's called a conjugate pair within the cell, is this is a one. You're like, okay, what's the big deal, Timberlake? Well, the big deal is it would put a one here and using this empty rectangle intersection, a one would have to be in one of these cells as a pointing pair. This then would restrict the one to so just this cell right here because of this one, it couldn't be there, couldn't be there or here anymore. You put a one here, it forces a two there, forces a three there. So these three digits are different from each other, no matter if this is a three or a one, all the possibilities. This is huge to know, because now you can use the hack, the simple hack of coloring to make some more deductions, and I'll show you how. Okay, we're back to where we were. One, you know that one of these has to be a three, right? Because it's one of the three possibilities. So this is actually a virtual pointing pair. A three has to be in one of those cells, which means you can eliminate a three from the cell. And once you displace a mark, you can solve for a three right there, displacing that four. You don't believe me, try it out. You don't put a three there, you'll see you'll run out of places, a digits to put into these three cells. And because it's empty rectangle intersection, you're gonna, you're gonna break the puzzle. So the other thing, the twos, they're in one of these two cells. So they form a virtual pointing pair as well. It means a two cannot be anywhere else in this column, right? Because you know a two's gotta be in one of those two cells. It has to be because these three digits can only be one, two, or three. The twos are restricted there. It means these two cells cannot contain a two. This is nice. You're like, okay, so what's the big deal? Well, it gets fun when you look at the ones because the threes are there, the twos are there, but the ones are in these two different so they don't see each other, right? So what that means is a one's gonna be here or here, right? Because it has to be in one of those cells. So you, we're gonna use the hack of coloring. You know, in one possibility, a one is in this cell right here. The other, only, the other possibility, a one has to be here. So you use this coloring. If you can color out any blocks, rows, or columns that contain the blue and the orange, and one can't be anywhere else in that row, column, or block. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So for example, if this is blue, uh, then these wouldn't be ones. And so if this is not blue, one of these would have to be a one. And not both of them, but one of those has to be a one. That's the key thing to note. Which also means uh, if this is the other possibility if this is not a one, one of those has to be a one. Well, what's the other possibility in this block? It's right here, right? Because of that one. 
So if this is a one, those wouldn't be, this would also have to be a one, right? They match the orange, which means one of these two cells, since this is a one, one of these two cells would be the opposite. It'd be blue because this would force a one orange value in one of those two cells right there. And then the other thing to think of is with these two values, you know, if this is, if that's a one, can't be a one, you got this one covering this cell, this would also be the, the blue value. So now you can make some more deductions here. You're like, okay, Tim, like, this is a little weird. What you need to know is, since you know one of these has to contain, a, you know, either a one's in one of these two cells or it's here, you can eliminate a one from any other cell in that row. You can eliminate a one from right there, right? Because you know in one scenario, a one's in one of these blue cells. The other scenario, a one is in this orange cell, okay? And so that means this can't be a one. You put a one there, you're going to break the puzzle. So you can actually solve this first seven using a little bit of coloring. And what it also means is this now would be, you know, in your blue scenario. So hold on to that. What else can you do? Well, if you know a one has to be in one of these cells or it's here, these act as conjugate pairs, this can no longer contain a one. We knew it could be in one of these two as a possibility, but it can't be here anymore because in the blue scenario or in the orange, they're going to be in one of these three cells. So you can remove a one from right there. That can no longer be a one. And so now you have two possibilities here. You have two possibilities here. Keep this polarity going. We're not done. You're going to keep on making some solves here. Because these two sevens now, where can the seven go in block one? It's got to be there. It means that has to be a nine. And get rid of those colors. And it leaves you now with just a one, two naked pair. A one's going to be one of them, and, and, you know, and then the other's going to be a two. Okay. So keep following this. With this seven, means that has to be a seven now. And then with this seven, seven's right there. With this four, and this four and the four here, four's going to be one of those so cells. Okay, no biggie. Until you look right here and notice, hey, that's six. This is going to be a one or a two. Well, that's a one or two. That's a one or two. This cannot contain a two anymore. You can actually solve that cell for a six now. And now you got one, two here. All right, so we're growing. Remember, in one scenario, all the blues will be a one. In the other, all the oranges will be a one. And now we're getting down to single digits in each block. This is good stuff. Since that's going to be a one, two naked pair there, five, eight here, three, four, six, seven, you notice now the only thing left right here has got to be a nine. Okay, so you can solve that for a nine. Take these nines and fix the nines right there. Now you're going to start looking at impact, row, column, and block. Two cells remain in column. One. Got to be one or two. That's it. Because you have a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, one of these is going to be blue and one's going to be orange. How do you know? Which one's which? Because of this cell right there. That's the orange. This is going to be your blue scenario. And this is going to be your orange scenario. Also means one, two there. A one and two are a naked pair. Cannot be anywhere else along row four. So what does that do to this cell here? Cannot be a one or a two. It cannot be a three, cannot be a four, five, six, seven, or a nine. This has to be a naked single eight. It's got to be naked single eight, which means you can disambiguate the five and the eight right there. What's the impact of that? Well, with these fives and this five, you can solve for a five right there, displacing that seven. Okay? And then with these fives and this five, you can mark fives right there. Okay? Not done. With these sevens and this seven, you can solve for a seven right there. Okay, you'll notice two digits remaining in row five. It's got to be a two or a nine. All right, since that's got to be a two or a nine, this has to be a one or a three. And polarity-wise, if it's not part of the blue set, it's got to be the orange set. Now follow the impact here on column seven. You know, you got a 1, 3 there. You got a 2, 6, 7 in the column. You just need a 4 
five, eight, or nine. Well, four, five, nine right there. This has to be an eight now. Okay, and then with these eights and this eight, you can solve for an eight right here, displacing that five. Displace the five there. Solve that for a five, displace the four, displace the six. These are all logical solves. And what it does is now it leaves you with just a one and two right here. And so use the colors. Right now, these colors represent, you know, the two possibilities where one can be. It can be there or there in this row, there or there in this block. Notice these four cells. They only contain the same two digits, a one and a two. So if this is a one, that has to be a two. That would be a one, that'd be a two. The only other possibility, if this is not a one, is that's a two, that's a one, that's a two, that's a one. You notice that you have a blue cell here an orange cell there. Because a one has to be one of these, the two has to be in the other, this cell here cannot contain a two. I mean, I can show it to you pretty quickly. If you put a two here, remove twos from those two cells, you put ones there, well, guess what? That would have to be a two, and that would have to be a two. You can't both put a two in there. You gotta have a one in there somewhere. So, you know, you can eliminate the two from right here. And so this little switch, this little tweak is called a remote pair, and you can use coloring to find that. What it allows you to do is solve this cell now for a three. Has to be a three, can't be a two. Since that's a three, you know this has to be a one, and now you can do some pretty big solving. You know now, since this is a one, all of the orange values have to be ones. They all have to be ones. And now, all the blue values are not going to be ones. So those are going to be twos. And these are going to be threes. Have to be. See all that solving you did real quick? Okay. Now, use impact, real column block, hunt down the marks. What else can you solve here? That's got to be a two with this three. That's got to be a two. I don't see a three in row one. We're just going to do some normal solving here. What do you got cut across here? It looks like a one, two, and a nine with the one and two right here. This has to be your nine, and that's gonna be a one or a two. I can mark that real quick, but we'll get some solves here. You can displace that nine, solve this for a nine. There's your two, there's your nine, there's your two, there's your one. Nice. And then with these ones and this one, you can solve for a one right there. With this column now, you have a full house, just count up one, two, three. Four, five, don't see a six, that's gotta be your six. And this has to be your four to finish block nine. Okay, cut across the six, displace the six, solve that for a six. This three, displace the three, solve that for a three. This four, displace that four. Solve this for four, displacing that seven. Okay, two cells remaining. Look in here first. One, two, three, four, five, don't see a six, that's gotta be a six. And your last digit right here is a two. Now, see if you can apply coloring to solve this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.